Max leads the lost children through a vent into the area of Bartertown where they make the methane gas. They see Master, and we're just left to assume they plan to rescue him. The next shot just has two children already inside the place without explaining how they got through the vent, which still has a grating on it too tight for anyone to fit through. Then the children swing across the room on a rope while shouting and accomplished literally nothing other than alerting Wily e. Coyote that they're here. And where did the rope come from? Why did they just have a random rope in the middle of the ceiling that has knots for hanging on to? Was it just conveniently put there for people to swing on and feign excitement in this terrible movie? Who knows? Oh wait, I do. So after swinging back to the vent, the scene is just edited to have the children now on the other side of the grating because obviously they don't fit through in reality. Next, the slave who sent the monkey out earlier in the film, without ever talking to Max about what was going to happen, somehow knows exactly what to do as if this was some orchestrated plan. He gets Wily e. Coyote's attention by saying a random line that means nothing, and Coyote hesitates to shoot, just so that the slave man can drop the ramp used to feed the pigs on his head, in classic Home Alone comedy fashion. Then, without ever explaining how Max and the children got from the vent onto the pig feeding ramp, they slide down, meet up, and grab Master. Moments later, Wily e. Coyote gets back up again and is instantly knocked over into a huge pool of pig shit, where he stays submerged for the next five minutes of the film. So he's dead, right? Nope. Apparently animal feces is a good substitute for oxygen. At this point in the movie, it's becoming very clear the writers and directors aren't taking this seriously as the genre it's in. The movie is listed as a science fiction doomsday action film, but is undeniably a slapstick family comedy. Yet there's children dying slow deaths in this film and women being punched in the face. So who the fuck is this for? Max, Master, and the children all get on some train that was never previously set up in the film and head out of Bartertown on it. The town begins to go berserk with everybody frantically running around looking for weapons. We get a random shot of the collector slumped over for no reason. Is he supposed to be sad? Is he dying? Is he taking a little nap? I think most likely the actor is just contemplating why he's in this shitty movie, and they just decided to film it. Then Tina Turner starts shouting at everyone, giving some inspirational speech, ending it by saying, Find the little man! Bring him back to me! Alive! We will rebuild! <laughs> Who took him? No mercy. Which completely contradicts how she acts at the end of the movie, which you'll see later. We cut to everybody on the train riding away, and Max asks a question that I'm assuming was an attempt at funny dialogue, but really just reflects how nonsensical the script is. Max asks the slave man, So what's the plan? And he admits he has no idea what's happening. Plan! Right now, plan! While I found this genuinely funny, it wasn't for the same reason the writers expected me to find it funny. This line of dialogue is a great example of how none of the character's motivations or actions make any sense. Max is the one who set the whole non-existent plan into motion, and everybody followed along. How did the slave know what to do with the pig feed ramp if there was no plan? Nobody has any idea what they're doing, and even the writer of the script doesn't know. In the next scene, one of the children is looking at the back of the train and see they're being chased by a large group of cars. But what he sees next had me in tears. Yep. That's Wiley e. Coyote catching up to them on a handcar, manually pumping his way over to them at the same speed as a train after they got a head start on him. This is probably the best scene in the movie and made the entire thing worth it for me. And it's all played out as if it was supposed to create tension and excitement. Fucking brilliant. Despite establishing in early scenes over and over that the people of Bartertown have guns that work, not a single weapon is fired in this entire chase other than a harpoon that goes through the slave man's leg. Pretty brutal action movie shit, right? But then this happens. Why is this movie constantly trying to test what you're supposed to feel? Am I supposed to be laughing with the sense of humor of an eight-year-old boy? Or am I supposed to be at the edge of my seat watching this life or death action sequence? Well, the answer comes from Wile E. Coyote. Nobody's life is at risk. 
Coyote gets on the back of a car and gets ran into the tracks in front of the train. The train hits him and the car he was on explodes. So now he's dead, right? Nope. In the spirit of Looney Tunes, Wile E. Coyote is just covered in some black residue and stuck on the front of the train screaming. only to crawl onto the side of the train off screen for another hilarious sequence that ends with him finally falling to his death at about 60 miles per hour. The train reaches the end of its track in the middle of nowhere, which brings up another question. Who built this train and what's its purpose? Earlier in the film, Tina Turner says she was in Barter Town as it was built from the ground up. All this I built. So that means there was nothing out here, and the track had to be built at some point. But why build a track in the middle of some random desert? But that brings up the question of why build a town for trading in the middle of a desert? Where does their water come from? Why am I even asking questions at this point in the film? Let's just continue. So when they reach the end of the track, they have guns pointed at them by the six-year-old co-pilot from earlier in the film. Here the joke is essentially, Aw, aren't kids cute when they're trying to be tough? This is a stick-up! Nope. Fuck kids. The kid sees the rest of the cars chasing them and runs away to a little underground hideout. Max and the whole gang follow him down there where they finally meet Gyro Captain 2.0. Max says he'll murder him if he doesn't take them all on his plane designed for one person and some cargo. So Max and all the children stuff themselves in the cargo area of the tiny plane that in reality wouldn't be able to even move let alone lift off the ground with that much weight. But another realization occurs. Where are the rest of the children? There's only like six on camera, and we see all of them get on the plane. So I guess about 14 other kids got brutally murdered off camera, or got captured to be turned into rape slaves. Even Dada has been missing since the pig pit in Barter Town, most likely having his guts devoured by a large pack of animals. What fun for the whole family! They reach the end of the cliff and run out of room for takeoff. So our stupid action hero version of Max agrees to sacrifice himself by driving directly into the people chasing them, creating a runway between them and the plane. Doing this accomplishes nothing because none of the other cars slow down anyway. And who does Max run into? None other than Wily fucking Coyote, the indestructible cartoon character. Max jumps out of his car in time and is laying hurt on the ground when approached by Tina Turner. She gets out of her car and walks up to him just to deliver the most contrived line of the movie. Well, ain't we a pair, raggedy man? <laughs> Wait, what? What? Earlier at the Thunderdome, she was just going to have him killed. And just before this chase, she said, For those who took him, no mercy. So now that he's murdered one of her followers, stole her source of gasoline, and effectively destroyed her town, he's all good to go. She doesn't care, she just laughs it off. Wow, there might be a gasoline shortage, but apparently heroin is in high supply. How fucking high is she? And if Max's life was never at risk, and they don't have any pigs for Master to make methane with in Sydney, what were the stakes? What was even the goal of this entire thing? Well, after this great piece of awkward comedy and Wile E. Coyote's sign-off for the movie, we see what the goal was. In some contrived outro, Mama is having story time with the newborn children and telling them how they got to where they are. This is taking place inside of a completely empty concrete room with nothing but torches lighting it. As the camera zooms out and shows where they are, they're in the destroyed ruins of a city. So instead of staying in a valley that had clean water and apparently food for 20 plus children to eat, they risk their lives to fly into a desolate city that has no source of food and most likely no clean drinking water. Good thing Max sacrificed himself to help a bunch of retarded children starve to death, except no sacrifice was even made because Tina Turner is high as fuck on drugs. Goodbye, soldier. Fuck this movie. A lot of people who genuinely liked Mad Max 3's response to me will most likely be, 
Why do you care so much? It's just a movie. And in response to that, I say, since when did it's just art become a justification for it being lazy? If I smeared my feces on a piece of paper and sold it to people for millions of dollars with the excuse that it's an extension of Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa, would you be okay with that? Could I say, why do you care so much? It's just a painting. Since Hollywood movie makers realized they were in a billion dollar industry, they realized they don't have to try as long as the marketing is a success. They realized there's an enormous number of people who will passively shove popcorn into their mouth while breathing out of it, just to have some attractive people act important on screen and effectively turn their brains off for two hours. People like this are why Beyond Thunderdome has an 82% on Rotten Tomatoes. A constant reminder to George Miller that he got away with this all is that people will buy the Mad Max Trilogy collection of DVDs to this day. There is no trilogy. There's two Mad Max movies made with craft and a soul. Then there's a marketing scam made using the title of Mad Max. Now because George Miller got away with his enormous scam and still got great reviews, what reason does he have to give any effort into Mad Max 4 Fury Road? The tickets will sell themselves based on the name alone. Why should he even make a movie? Why not just have a feely intro and cut to a close-up of Tom Hardy driving for two hours? People will cling to a franchise and defend it no matter how far it goes down the toilet. And I'm not saying Fury Road is condemned to for sure be as bad as Beyond Thunderdome, but what I am saying is this. When you buy DVDs and tickets to terrible movies that were made for marketing purposes, you basically cast a ballot. You voted that what this producer got behind was okay and that they can do it again. You're encouraging poorly thought out movies by your mindless consumption of whatever trailer is exciting enough for you at the moment. One day you're going to regret showing Hollywood they can get away with this. One day when all the gas that drives creativity in artists is dried up and you're wandering the dystopian wastelands of the film industry, watching romantic comedies and expendable movies, you're going to be begging for a film hero. You're going to be wishing you had a Mad Max. Mad Max.